Aha, uh -huh. so that was the last of our gold there, used on these golden carrots. Well, I guess we we better go fix up that stupid gold farm that we started many years ago and never got to doing. Um I guess I guess let's get to the nether then. Bam! That transition over. Right, yeah, so we are in the nether now, um, above our nether. I'm not resetting the nether, that's just silly, because I've got a lot of things here, well, some things here, and I really don't want to reset it, because looks like we have a little bit more gold here, but, ah, point, point being, we finished our main gold supply. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Um, yeah, we finished... Finished up our main gold supply, um, this still isn't finished, and I don't even know if it will work right now. Um, it looks like, because we're in the nether waste biome, we're not going to get any uh, normal piglins spawning, but the zombified piglins, I'm just going to call it zombie piglin, that, that's the correct name for them, they can still spawn. Right, bow is too powerful. And that's all we have right now. They are actually spawning fast enough to continue the cycle, by the looks of it. Oh, we do have some uh, piglins spawning there. Okay, so here's the plan then. Tear this down. That's number one. Rebuild it from magma block things. Yeah, that's the second plan and make the collection system actually work because I don't have a collection system right now. But I'm surprised that they spawn somewhat fast enough. That, that's good to know. Um, I don't know how high up I am. 220 and that's not gonna be 180 blocks above. That is it. So we're gonna have to do some spawn proofing as well, I think. Um, that's fine, that's completely doable. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're, this uh, this farm still works to some extent, so that's very good to know. Uh, let me just get all the drops here and I'll go collect the resources and we'll build this. Aha! Uh -huh. So, a really good way to make magma blocks is doing this. Now, I have been collecting slime for a very long time here. I've just been letting this sit and collect slime balls. And we only have about that much, but I have also been collecting many blaze rods. Not recently, but over over the years here in the world, back when I was using a blaze farm for my main source of XP, I have collected many and many blaze rod. And I think we might just have enough overall to get the thousands of magma blocks that we need for this. So we'll see, I guess, we'll see. Uh, let me just get everything here. And I'll see how many I can make in total. Should be interesting. Hmm. So from two shulker boxes of magma cream, which took quite a long time to craft up, we only get half a shulker box of magma blocks. Now we also have a few more over here from what we started with earlier in the episode and what we had lying around. But this is going to take a long time to get a few shulker boxes off, so uh, I guess I should better probably get to work and maybe set up some better system of crafting this so nothing despawns while I craft. Right, so, because we're using so many blaze rods for this, in fact, we've used two thirds of our supply already, I just wanted to see what kind of speeds we're going to get from this farm if I need any more blaze rods. and. It's it's decent, it's decent, and I can AFK here for like, I don't know, half an hour and get some collected down there because I changed the game rule when they added entity cramming. I changed the game rule to be like 75 or 150 or something like that. But it's not 24, so we can AFK here for a long time and still get profit there. Um, now, let's head down here, yeah? Uh, let me get my looting sword, actually. Uh, I think this needs looting. And do we have any potions? That's pretty loud. Um, 
we don't have any potions, but let's poison all of these. Pretty sure this is how it works. Um, this used to be my main XP farm for a long, long time. Have crafting table here, even have places for enchanted books. Some of these are actually decent, like I wouldn't mind taking this and this. Maybe not any of those. Um, but yeah, like, this was pretty decent. And as you can see, we're already. We had both of these full, and we're already doing quite a lot. Um, okay, let's hit these. This doesn't have mending, does it? No. Okay. And we got 46 from that. That's, uh, that's pretty slow, I have to say. It's pretty slow. Um. I mean, you can live with that, and that was only about 30 blaze. I can have at least three times as many. Um, so we'd have a few stacks from one harvest. Uh, but I'm gonna guess I'm gonna try to not build too big of a farm and try to make it just the right size. But I've got the next batch ready here to craft up into more magma blocks. So I guess I'll go do that real quick. Uh, I might probably just stay here and collect more blaze rods if I need to. Whilst I'm in the area, I would just like to point out I made a crucial mistake with this. A huge mistake. In the last episode, I said that this design, this pattern, was the best. I was so, so wrong. Because later in the creative world, I used the checkerboard pattern, which is the best, and it was over twice as fast. Only a bit over twice, but still over twice as fast as this. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this because this this is just to get a few pumpkins and melons nothing too serious and it's doing pretty well there's several double chests filled with melon already and this is the pumpkins we have and that's way faster than a design that I had over there that I still have because I forgot to tear it down in the last episode and reuse the pistons and I remade a lot of pistons and that was a waste but it's alright, it's alright, it's alright we don't need we don't need crazy fast. This isn't a technical survival let's play. This is building let's play. Well guys, something very special just happened. Just moments ago actually. Seconds. I have been waiting here all day for this moment to happen. And it's been years in the process of happening. It's been very slow. And <laughs> it's finally happened. We reached day a thousand. Woo! Celebrate! Made a few fireworks there. So yes, uh, it's it's day one thousand. It. I almost missed it. Like just the other day, I was playing and I was like, nine hundred and ninety. Wow! And then I made sure to not miss it by just being AFK for couple of hours and checking every few minutes really um, I just want to check something I want to check the statistics how how many of those days have I basically been full days because the full day is 20 minutes and um, you can obviously sleep and that progresses the day to the next one um, Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, which I probably am because I'm not quite sure what I did with my calculator there, but but on average, it seems that I uh, I played for 1.3 days. Um, yeah, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Uh, so let's let's assume that a normal day is 10 minutes. Yeah, um, I played for 13 minutes per actual day in Minecraft so yeah I I, I, th I think that's fair I I was expecting about 12 actually but yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with that you know I didn't just sleep away most of the time here hello there so my plan for rebuilding this is to just take out take some of these magma blocks and just go go on each layer and then break and replace with my offhand and that should that should probably do it you know that's pretty simple I think um, I'm not entirely sure how many layers I'll do I think what I'm gonna do actually is only have 
two or three layers in total, but I'm going to make them a lot wider. Um, I believe that the furthest block there is the 24th block, so this would be pretty much perfect, but it, it won't really matter because I'm going to have a floor over here, kind of like uh, Mamo did on his Hermancroft episode recently. Those guys are running around a lot. Um, and they'll just come to you and funnel over here and stuff. Uh, and I'll make them wider so I won't need the more spaces there. And I think that should work pretty well. Uh, not entirely sure how I'll deal with the piglins. Might have to kill them. Okay, so I've replaced most of the bottom layer with the magma uh, blocks. Um, and I worked out a nice little, nice little um, formula for working out how many you'll need. So this circle is radius 24. Wait, yeah, radius 24. Um, the first outer layer, including corners, so there's no like diagonal connections. Every block has a connection. Uh, so that block and that block connect over there uh, via another block. And if you layer them all around each other, making sure that each layer has those same connection types, then the formula for it becomes very simple. Three stacks and then previous plus eight. So the second second layer will be uh, three, three stacks and eight. Then the next third layer will be three stacks and eight, uh, 16. Then after that, three stacks and 24, three stacks and a half, and so on. And that's that's pretty simple actually. And I'm not I'm not sure how many I'll go. Um, when I built this, I actually used a proper like app to work out the shapes of the circles. So the ratios of the inside and outside circles stay the same. But I'm gonna just do plain old circles today because I'm quite lazy. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go out seven blocks. I think I have it as five blocks right now, in width, and I'm gonna have it seven block width there, on each layer, and then plus whatever is gonna be here, obviously in the middle. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a wide circle, but yeah, um, that that's a pretty simple way to figure it out, and I I like that. I like it. Hmm, I have to say, it doesn't look all that great uh, ratio-wise looking from down here because that is clearly thicker than that. So maybe maybe I will make a proper ratio. Who knows? All right, everybody. It's now quite a quite a while late. It's it's uh, it's been about a week, I think, since I started recording. And in that time, I have managed to explore the Nether, get myself a full stack of ancient debris with which I made myself the full armor, the tools, and I still have a few left, so I can make more tools, more armor in case I need it. And in that time, I have also completely remade this gold farm. Now, it's not quite complete yet, I still need to put something in the middle here that will basically keep me safe from the pigmen and also lure them in so they die, etc, etc. Um, 
this design is very similar to what Raiseworks did and what Mumbo Jumbo did in his Hermitcraft series, but I did it slightly differently. I kept the circle here from the previous farm and I basically made it a little bit wider and to make up for the fact that this is a circle and not quite as wide as the farm should be, I made it a square on the outside and although pigmen probably won't be spawning as much over there as they are closer to me, um, this should still all work out quite well. Although they probably will still spawn quite, quite frequently towards the edge there. Uh, the only problem there is it'll take some extra time for them to reach me over here, but I think that would have been the same problem with the other design that I should have followed. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. I just proofed it over there and I'm down to my last golden carrot here. That's how long it's been taking me to do all this. And I guess I'll get back to you when I finish doing this little gold farming section over here. So something I just realized, um, I need to either put a lot of minecarts there or I will have to change my game rule about the mob crowding because they're not dying when they should. So what I believe that means is that there is in fact no entity cramming in this world. Yes, that seems to be the case. I have about 150 creepers here and if I change this back to 24, they start dying. Okay, I'm not complaining about that because that is what I wanted in my world. I have a different way of killing them though, so it's alright. So, the farm works, it's fully complete now. Um, I have went ahead and made myself a new sword here, specifically for this. Um, it's, got, it's got sweeping edge 3 and looting 3, which was the most important part. It's got mending, which is quite important for this. And it's got smite 5, which is... Um, it, it's effective against some dead mobs, such as the pigmen here, so it's easier to kill them. One thing I need to do is, I just adjusted this trapdoor, I had it open before, and that way I had the XP flowing to me underneath it, but I was picking up some items that were flying out, so I just closed this, and I'm gonna need to make some kind of small timer that will flip this open for a split second every now and then, so the XP can come. Otherwise it's pretty useless. It only needs to flick it open for a second and then they, all the XP will come to you. But yeah, that's the farm. Um, got double hopper speed basically over here and this this is like the killing area over here and then down here I've got two sorters uh, they sort the same items and then at the end of them I have furnaces those are for golden swords and I'm gonna attach double chest full of blaze rods to them so that they don't run out of uh, fuel because those, the, the first ones in line with the hoppers, so that one and that one right there, they get the most swords, but the swords don't come flowing constantly, so all the fuel gets used up pretty quick, and the second furnace doesn't ever really get used. Yeah, that's just for extra few nuggets, and then they'll automatically funnel into the rest of the nuggets here. Um, so what I have here is the sorted items. I've got rotten flesh here. I've got quite a bit already, I've got the nuggets here, quite a bit as well, and the gold, just a measly five and a half stacks. However, I'm about to convert all of these nuggets into ingots, uh, shouldn't be too hard, I'm all, I'll just um, throw all of these out, uh, I'll start with the hoppers because those are full as well, and then I'll see how many nuggets I end up with, I mean ingots. Okay, so after some crafting, this is how many gold ingots we have. That's enough for almost three stacks of gold blocks, which I'd say I have kept for maybe an hour and a half to two hours in total, and three stacks of gold blocks from that is quite impressive, I'd say. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I've got a small crafting table over here underneath the pressure plate. I should have just put it buttoned down because it's quite hard to click on the crafting table, but the pressure plate will do, and 
yeah, I think I'll just leave this gold here and I'll let the other stuff collect. Uh, I'll be taking this rotten flesh and trading it with my clerics, actually. And my clerics, they're they're quite special. Let me let me show you something. A few of my villagers are very special. Well, most of them are actually. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. Um, there's some kind of like a bug um, when the old villagers pre 1.14 transferred into the new villages um, from after 1.14. There's a bug where they only have the like like the name that they are, like the profession name, but no level next to it. Uh, you'll notice, for example, over here, this guy is a toolsmith and it says his level, master. Um, this guy doesn't. What that means is that these guys are bugged out. And once they interact with the um, station, they'll be able to trade infinitely without ever needing to restock and you can just afk trade forever and they never have to restock and that's all of my librarians here um just see the trades i have with them so that's all of my librarians apart from one actually apart from this guy uh can't open this yeah this guy is not glitched but i don't think i'll be using him very much and my cleric here is glitched now, this guy has Rotten Flesh cancelled out. I'm not sure why, but three of my villagers can't seem to use the tool stations or the um, workstations, is, is what I meant. Three of them can't. So that's this cleric here and this cleric here. Now, this guy has all of his trades still unlocked, so I'm hoping that they won't get locked. And this is where I'll trade my Rotten Flesh um i have two toolsmiths over here um they are the normal ones and i've just been trading some iron with them here every now and then for the extra uh, emeralds um this guy is very special he's a farmer the lowest pumpkin price that you could have previously um and it's un unlimited so you can just trade forever there and then this guy this guy can't access his workstation either for some reason and I'm not sure I'm not sure maybe I just have to trade some other trade and cancel that out as well um, so that he gets updated like he needs to have received some kind of trade update for him to realize that he needs to restock maybe but yeah that's my villager situation here um, I'll show you the emeralds I have I've got quite a few here and if I go get my pumpkins I have been trading them, but I think we should have enough to do a stack of emeralds real quick. Yeah, we do. If I get my pumpkins... Ooh, that's too many. Uh, let's just do that. Uh, I'll show you just how easy it is to get a stack of emeralds with these old villagers. It, it's quite insane, really. We just do that. And it doesn't get cancelled out, ever. He never has to restock, even when you leave the window, it still stays there. As you can see, no particle effects of any kind, he doesn't get updated. And it's still there. So you can continue trading, and <laughs> that's a pretty OP glitch to be honest, but I'm gonna take advantage of it, especially with this cleric guy and all my new rotten flesh. Um, maybe I'll even buy some redstone from him, because redstone is kind of short, even though I do have a witch farm here. But yeah, that's mainly what I've been up to in this episode. Just doing a lot of stuff and we got the gold farm done. I took it off our checklist over there. Um, I did some villager stuff, got all of the workstations in. And I also, um, I, I was setting up my uh, pack for the technical series. It's um, technically it's a mod pack, but it's not actually changing any vanilla features. It's just adding on some very small minor changes to make life easier in the technical survival aspect and one of the things that I have is the carpet mod and this is a great tool and I loaded up this world in that instance with the carpet mod and I checked out why I'm getting such bad FPS so I did the slash tick health command and it showed me that entities were the worst of them all I'm just going to take that grass block off so I'm going to put it there so entities were the worst, and I checked out tick entities to see which entities were the worst, and 
To my surprise, it's the pigs over here. So I I bred the pigs up and I killed off all the adults, same with the cows, and it didn't seem to fix my FPS too much, um, even though that was what was causing most of it. I am gonna I'm gonna copy this world over to that instance again and check it out again. There are a lot of pigs in this world. That's something I can tell you. There's just a lot. There's a pig there, there. So maybe I'll just have to go and kill them all off. There's another one over there even. Um, so maybe there's just too many for some reason in this world and I'll have to go kill them off. So we'll see about that. But as it is right now, my FPS isn't that great in this world. Um, and I am trying to sort it out with carpet mod, seeing what, what it can do and trying to debug all the issues here and I think that's that's all I have time for in this episode now I have explained a lot um, I, I think I'll keep this as a diamond sword because it doesn't it doesn't need to be netherite and also I don't think I'm ever going to go netherite mining again as far as I can tell you I've also got a shulker box with some of the new stuff from the nether so I've got some warp nylium and crimson nylium and I'll be using I'll be using that to grow some of the new trees and get the blocks that way. And yeah, that is it for today guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss anything out. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye.